Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Claudia Jordan, and we are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, get ready to sip on this hot tea. I am on location in Vegas. I'm going to the Usher show tonight. Don't judge me. I've already had a few drinks, but please, it's not about me. It's about the group. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? <laughs> What's a few drinks, Claudia? What's up, Claudia? Two doubles and Funky trying to come for my look, bitch. So my look, please welcome Funky Taniva mm -hmm. in the all black with the 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 the, 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 the DP. What's up, Al, uh, Q? Hey, you know, but the <laughs> gag is, Claudia. You know, one of us is doing it, and the other is doing it well. I'll leave that to the fans to decide. <laughs> oh, well, we already know who the better man is. <laughs> Y'all drinking tonight. I, uh, oh. I, he, Al drinking that damn buttery Chardonnay. Uh, <laughs> I was a very bad boy last night. And so I did not unlock my better self down to the bar with a Honda Cars B. And so I'm drinking Florida's finest H2O tonight. Uh, uh, oh, not me. I'm drinking my buttery Chardonnay, you know. But I wanted to ask you this real quick, Claudia, because you've had a drink line before. I don't know if people know this, yep. but you used to have your own. That's peachy like, wine. Yeah, she had her own wine. So I had a, a wine called Family Wines to reach out to me because I've gotten such a big response about the buttery Chardonnay. And they've asked me if I would be interested in, in curating a buttery Chardonnay. Did you find that that financially um, good or what were your thoughts around that? Well, it did end in a lawsuit, so I don't know how much I can say. But <laughs> I didn't know when I got in business with them that one of them was a major Trump supporter. So when all the uh, Black Lives Matter stuff came out, I was very vocal. And then I was punished because of that. Uh, and I'm like, you cannot hire a Black woman to cater to Black people to get Black dollars and then be mad at them when they stick up for Black causes. Gotcha. I don't know what I can say about that, but I'm going to leave it at that. But there were times when, the, so they already had the the wine on there in their list of pop, their portfolio. When mm -hmm. I got hold of it and really started marketing, I had Cedric the Entertainer drinking it. I had Monique drinking it. I 10X what they were doing in business sales. Mm. And so I will definitely have a sidebar conversation with you about the business and what to ask for. I think that is a great thing you should do. I really want us to start doing merch. I think we need to have some t-shirts. People are asking for shirts. We should right. have not me all the catchphrases, funky, the not me girls, the buttery Chardonnay, the let's move on. Like we have a lot of things that we can already do. So we do I'm gonna put a website up. We're gonna all we're gonna go in on this and we're gonna I think we're gonna have some merch available to our our our, our fans. And I think you should one thousand percent I'm gonna talk to you about it offline now, but one thousand percent I ten X the okay. valuation of their brand. So I that's imagine my surprise when they had a problem with me speaking on black uh issues. Right, so right. I am having um to take legal. You know, before we but before we move forward, I want to get into some of these messy comments already. So we were talking about judging the outfits between me and Claudia. Uh -oh. and, and Darius Daniel said, baby, the only thing we gonna judge is that internet connection, okay? Uh -oh. And Aaliyah Aaliyah Chanel said, Oh Lord, a few drinks. I hope Claudia and Joyce don't get into it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, well, that was got her crab, so you know Joyce is fine. She got, she said her husband bought her a big old bag of crabs. Crab. Oh, oh yeah, so, so we know Joyce somewhere with her feet up. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't have those kind of shows every show because we would it it wouldn't make it special. But when we do, I'm actually glad that we didn't have to have a Zoom meeting or an HR call. We actually everyone actually understood that we were having a good time. So. You know, I like that we can give the fans something like that every once in a while because I think that was that's what makes that's what actually made people fall in love with us, the recklessness of this show. <laughs> well, child, we were reckless it was. I, I went back, I'm so ashamed at the replay. <laughs> Ooh, child, we were we was all over. But anyway, production yelling at us, Claudia, going to the next thing. Real quick though, um, before we start the show, we have a big announcement for our soulmates, especially our soulmates that live in Texas, my state. Mark your calendars because next Monday, November 13th. And November 14th on Tuesday, TGF is going on the road. We'll be filming in studio in Houston, Texas. Hey. Okay. Are you guys excited? I'm super duper excited. And I guess we can go ahead and tell the soulmates it's not set in stone yet, guys, but we are planning to do a meet and greet at a very popular place in Houston that Monday. So you guys get your outfits together. 
call off for work on Tuesday because we're gonna have a good time. <laughs> oh, oh, they got it up. I'm sorry. There it is. You one might actually, uh, yeah. So that's heart. gonna be one of our meet and greets. And uh, Houston promoters, if you want to do another one where you have us host a club night on like Monday night, Sunday night on Monday, we can always add some more dollars to our pocket so we can buy some more clothes. <laughs> so we'll be at, right. don't forget to call out, tell them we'll be at Prospect Park on Monday. As a matter of fact, production, send that to all of us via text and then our will tech will add it to our Instagrams tonight so you guys can see where we'll be at. Houston, Texas, you are the first, but hopefully not the last of the cities we'll be coming to and doing our show live. And to add to the excitement, we are going to play an in-studio game of the hot seat so that means Houston people, we're going to need you to come through. Now, if you are a soulmate and you love us and you think you know all the facts about us and you're based in Houston, Texas, because we can't fly you out just yet. That's going to be next season, maybe. Uh, please send your name, photo, and what makes you a super fan to TGIF at foxhole.tv. That's, that's TGIF at foxhole.tv. And we will get you in studio. You'll meet us live. You'll take pictures and all of that. And you'll play the hot seat with us in Houston on the 13th and 14th. That's next week, y'all. It's right around the corner. All right, hold up. We have another surprise for our soulmates. We have, well, we already kind of mentioned it. We are hosting our first meet and greet live in Houston, Monday, November 13th at Prospect Park Restaurant, 7 p.m. Central Time. So pull up, grab a drink, and a photo with your favorite host. We, <laughs> we take gifts and we do take gifts. Okay, let's get into these topics. The chat is going wild to see. Houston, you're going to come out for us. Houston, stand up. All right, cool. All right. The police officer responsible for Elijah McClain's death was found not guilty. 34-year-old Nathan Woodyard was acquitted of reckless manslaughter and criminally negligent homicide. Are you surprised by this outcome? Al, let's go to you first. I am super pissed about this story. I'm very upset about it. Well, you know, Claudia, we're we're definitely not surprised. That's number one. We're not. We're not surprised. Um, and you know, I have a saying on this show all the time when we cover bull crap like this is where is the outrage? We know that this happened yesterday. And where was all the outrage on our timeline? Now, what I will give people is this. Five people are being charged for the death of Elijah. The supervisor that supervised all of the policemen were convicted. This particular guy who was not convicted but acquitted was the police officer that put him in the chokehold that was at the time legal. It's no longer legal in the state of Texas, or I mean, whatever state this happened, but at the time it was legal. So the reason his defense said that he actually what you know performed a legal uh maneuver or a restraint now this is the deal the last two you have two more people that are going to be um charged or going to trial and those are the ones that worked with the paramedics they are saying that from the autopsy that the paramedics are the ones who actually killed him with the ketamine. So the hold did not cause his death, but in fact, the ketamine caused his death. Therefore, this young officer was acquitted. Now, I don't like how it sounds, but what it does give me is solace to know that those two EMT people that overdosed him on ketamine, their necks are on the line for sure. Imagine someone injects you with a substance that makes you die, and you were not a, a you were not a giving any bodily harm to anybody else. Like I, it's it's horrific. Q, what do you think about this story? And this I hear from all reports that this was a nice guy. He was was he was on the spectrum, I believe, right? He was on the spectrum. Um, I'm not sure if he was on the spectrum. I I can't remember, but you you probably read that when it first came out, right? Yeah, and, and they shot him up with ketamine. Q, what do you think about this story? Uh, this is definitely not the way I wanted to start the show, guys, uh, with a sad story like this. Um, I don't know what to feel. You know, as, as, as a Black man, my, my instant urge, my instant anger is I want everybody in prison, right? I want right. everybody involved in prison. That is my gut response and reaction. Um However, we live in a land with laws, you know, sometimes the laws work in our favor, sometimes they don't. According to the commentary from Al, you know, 
if the ketamine is in fact what killed him and that is conclusive from the medical professionals, then although this chokehold may seem uh, excessive, you know, this is not what killed him. The ketamine did and the, and the, and the EMTs need to be dead, but we all still probably feel regardless of the fact that this man got off on a technicality, we, we all still feel that there's some racial undertones to mm -hmm. all of it, that, that the chokehold, especially with a damn, that boy about as frail as me. Okay. Ain't no damn, re ain't no damn, you could have, Flick that damn boy in the ear and his ass would have fell into submission. There's no reason to put nobody his size or my size in no damn chokehold. They got to push that damn boy on the ground and, and stepped on his arm or whatever the case may be. So it's just sad all the way around. But I'm going to blindly trust the legal system and let it do what it do. And hopefully that the right people are brought to justice. The legal system got it wrong this time. This was not a violent boy young man. This was not a violent young man. First of all, you're shooting people up. You don't know what people have allergies to. You don't know what their background is. You don't know this. And for what? Apparently he was walking around. He had headphones on and a hoodie and he couldn't hear at first. And and then when they got him, he was like, please, I'm, 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 I'm. he was like pleading for them. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm weird. I'm socially, he said something about, he downplayed himself like, and then he kept saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He was apologizing for not doing anything. They literally played with this boy that really did not, he wasn't hurting anybody right. and they shot him up and they gave him a lethal dose. He died. Right. And everyone says how sweet of a boy this was. He was on the spectrum and it makes me nervous because what's to say we won't be in Houston, right? Say we're in Houston next week and one of us walks to the mall and a police officer with a hair up his ass sees one of us and says, you know, stop. You're doing something wrong. You're like, wait, what am I doing? And they kind of overreact and they call back up in and they give you a shot of something you don't know what it is and you die. They don't do this with white kids. They don't jump the gun. They're not scared of white kids. They're always afraid of, and scared for their life of an unarmed black person. Meanwhile, white kids with AR-17s or whatever the hell they are, 47s, whatever those guns are, they are taken somehow alive into custody. Yeah. Make it make sense, y'all. Yeah. A lot of yeah. did not deserve this. He was like, <sighs> it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, and I, I hate to make the parallel. You know how, like, the big discussion now is about the deaths that are going on in Israel. My question when I hear this type of story is, what about the deaths that continually go on by Black men in America? What about those? I mean, they make it so obvious the different, like how full of crap they are when they saw all men are created equal and all this nonsense. It doesn't apply to us. It doesn't apply to black people still in 2023. The kid had a mom, he had a family, he had people that loved him, he had goals and dreams. And it just doesn't get taken seriously just because of the color of his skin. But then we see little white boys that are privileged that come from an affluent family that rape girls behind dumpsters and the judge will say, why well, do I want to ruin his life? He had a lot of life ahead of him. All right, y'all, I'm getting sad. We got to move on from this. <laughs> no, we got to turn up. Don't worry. Uh, Robin Dixon is sticking behind uh, side her cheating man. Robin was booed by the crowd at BravoCon after explaining why she did not address her husband's cheating allegations during the last season of The Real Housewives of Potomac. Now, Robin said, my husband is not going to be thrown under the bus for a storyline. What do y'all think about this? Q, let me go to you first because I uh, you watch the show, don't you? Yeah, I, I jump in and out. Um, you know, Robin full of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like Robin completely reverse engineered her answer as to why she didn't bring up the cheating uh, allegations between her husband and herself, citing that whatever happened happened when the cameras were not rolling. And then, you know, the situation was fixed. Therefore, when they started rolling again, that there was no organic reason for her to bring it up. And all I can say is, I guess, but in the real world, gossip ain't got no expiration date, okay? If I ain't seen you in three months and then now I'm seeing you, baby, we need to talk about what I heard over the summer. <laughs> we need to talk about it. I know that's it. right. I know that's I don't, right. I don't, I don't want to hear, yeah, my husband, um, he, girl, he cheated on me over the summer break, but we fixed it, so it ain't nothing to talk right, about. Right, right. No, no, no. 
Who is right. cheating on you with? How'd you feel? Did you cuss him out? Did he move out the house for that time? Is you still getting married? Did you seek the who was she? Was she fat? Was she skinny? Was she white? <laughs> was she old? Was it somebody she worked with? Was it right. a friend of yours that left with your man? Did she lie? Cheat? Take all your hat? We need to understand the details, Robert. Now, don't get me wrong. It's never a right time for anybody to share your most vulnerable, embarrassing, uh, intimate secrets on these shows. So I don't blame her for not sharing. Claudia, let me ask you this because you have been under one of these contracts. Um, is it somehow written in your contract that you must tell your business? Yes. Now, when I did Couples Retreat with KJ, they said, even for the span of, I think, six months after filming went off, you have to let us know if right. any life-changing things happen in your relationship. If you get engaged, if y'all break up, you have to let us know. Let me tell you something, Robin. Let me tell you this. I know it's frustrating. And then you have enemies on the show. You don't want to give them, you don't want to give them bullets to shoot you. I totally understand where you're coming from. I, I understand trying to like let it slide. But once you sign that contract to be on a reality show, just know any little thing. If your man doesn't comment on your pictures, but he comments on other people's pictures, they're going to notice. If your man ain't, he's seen somewhere whispering in someone's ear, it could be his cousin. He could be helping his cousin with groceries in the house. They're going to put it on a blog. That is what you sign up for. Now, do you want to help people shoot you with your own bullets, with bullets? No, you do not. But what I would have done, she could have actually taken over and made this season, make, make the show be like, she could be the star of the show. You got to face it head on. Unfortunately, once you on those shows, she should have been like, listen, we're dealing with this. Let's keep it a buck. And you put up in the star of the show. Like, just just, just mm -hmm. take it on hands up. Nobody wants you to lie about it because then they want to, like, find every little thing. And people will try to, like, embarrass you. It's better to, like, you say funky. Like, let me, like, you ain't going to spray me with my own tea. Like, you put out there, you win, you control the narrative. You mm -hmm. do have to, like check in with them and tell them stuff. That's what, I, I mean, my VH1 contract was like that. Al, what do you think about this? Do you think she should have just like took it on, tackled First it head of all, on? Uh, Robin should have been booed off the stage. <laughs> this one thing that you, one thing, I'm, I'm so with Funky on this right here. Rob, the thing that really upsets me, there are two things that upsets me about Robin. She has the cheating. We have the coaching scandal, right? With him at that school. Robin seems to get away on this cast with stuff that she holds every other cast member to the fire for. And I don't know why they let her get away with this type of stuff. She does reality TV. She knows that her life, her life has no hidden secrets. It can't when you're on reality TV. Like you said, when I, when I was on VH1 on Basketball Wives, when they first introduced, those producers would actually get mad at you and take scenes from you. And I know, Claudia, you've experienced this. They will cut you from scenes if they feel like you're holding back some type of information. I don't care when it happened. It's called reality TV for a reason. And if you're going to hold those other ladies of that cast responsible for all the things that go on in their life, then they have the right to hold you. And the best part is that the Bravo fans at BravoCon, I think it's a whole cult, if you ask me. Like I told you, I've seen it. I, I think it's a cult and they knew and smelled bull crap when they heard it and they booed her ass. And it was a good <laughs> reality stars, people that are on reality shows. You're not going to win this. There's producers that are them. They're psychiatrist levels of manipulation. They know how to like work your stuff. Like you're better off to just say, listen, we're having issues right now. Let's just talk about it. You take the power away and you control your narrative a little bit because now you allow yourself to get embarrassed. Like, Robin, I think you should just, like, embrace it and just lean into it because the fans be knowing. They be knowing everything. All right, y'all. Coming up next, find out what we would do in crazy situations. And later, should the man pay all the bills? What do y'all think? Keep it locked. Hit that like button. We'll be right back. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter.
you're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just bougie. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. Exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I'm, living, I'm living vicariously through them. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Welcome back to TGIF Soulmates. We are coming to Houston. We will put information on all of our pages, and we are looking for Houston-based soulmates to join us in the hot seat. Come in the studio, meet us. We're going to have a meet and greet also. Y'all can meet us and bring us gifts. Um, <laughs> and, and yes, yes, you can bring us gifts. All right, soulmates, have you ever thought about how you would handle yourself if you were placed in the middle of an unexpected situation? Well, we like for you to chime in on the chat and with your friends in hashtag W-W-Y-D. What would you do? All right, y'all. Sexy Red recently stormed off stage mid-performance. Take a look. Now, apparently she was like, yo, they throwing stuff. They were throwing water bottles at her and they were throwing stuff at her. Now, if you paid for a concert, right? And one of these little people in the crowd ruined it for you by throwing stuff, what would you do? Q, let's go to you first. Okay. If it was anybody else, like if I was there to see Anita Baker mm-hmm. or Usher, like you about to see, if I was there to see Tupac's hologram, <laughs> I would be... <laughs> I would be upset, especially if, you know, I paid my money, it's hot, I'm standing up on my feet, all right? Period, hard stop. Um, Out of respect for her being a human being, nobody deserves to get things thrown at them on stage, with the exception of Azalea Banks. However, I am glad that the spirit of the ancestors is moving in the wind and it is telling the masses that we need to get sexy red off the stage. I'm not trying to hate on her bag. I'm not trying to hate on her as a person. Maybe I am a little bit. I said a long time ago, sexy red just should have never been a thing. I don't give a good goddamn. I don't care how y'all try to slice it, dice it, or describe it. Oh, you know, the ratchet girls deserve representation too. No, the hell they do not. No, they don't. All right. Sexy Red has got to be the single most talentless person, talentless person in the entire music industry. I am not about what she represents whatsoever. Again, I don't like the fact that they threw things at her. But maybe the Sandman should have came and got her ass off the stage. But I am glad she skied her ass off the stage. Al Reynolds, what do you think? <laughs> well, I definitely would want my money back because if I came to see, so you guys know I like Sexy Red. You know, if I paid my money to see Sexy Red and then she ended the concert, I want my money back and I want that person banned. Now, there's so many layers to this because Q's right. It, it, just the whole character of Sexy Red, it is kind of trashy. Her music is kind of trashy. She looked like she could, you know, use a little bath or something. But one thing I could never ever 
advocate. It's for somebody in that audience throwing anything on the stage towards a black woman that is pregnant or any woman that's pregnant because it could have hurt her. Maybe it wasn't a water bottle that could hurt her, but it could be a phone or it could be something else that could definitely hurt a pregnant woman. And that I'm very sensitive to. And I could see why she walked off because she's carrying another human being. And I don't care if people think it's funny or not. That's just not cool to throw something at a pregnant woman. Q, I see you laughing. What you laughing at? We got to jump in at one of these comments. Al Funky Jordan said, Sexy Red look like she's allergic to water. So I get <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then uh, NYC2B for me said, Q, there will always be a fan base for whatever is ghetto and ratchet, unfortunately, which I agree. There's a market for everything. So Q, does she look like this? <laughs> Does she look like her breasts smell like oil change? <laughs> I'm going to let sexy red live. <laughs> who, who were we talking about when you said their breath? He's an like academic. <laughs> Here's my thing, y'all. Um, there's a space in the world for all areas, all demographics to be represented. And who are we upon our bougie chairs that we sit in and we've been blessed. We've gotten to a point where we can actually be, you know, we can have a certain kind of taste and I don't like that. And I don't have to do that anymore. And I've ascended and I've become this. We weren't always where we are now today. And maybe sexy wet will, will evolve, but maybe she won't, but we cannot act like that. She does not de represent a huge demographic that, that wants representation. There are a lot of girls out there like sexy red. Now in our old age, forties and fifties, we are not into that anymore. That is not our thing anymore. But there was a whole bunch of 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 some year olds that, you know what? Hey, if that's what they like, they are totally entitled to it. We don't have to go to the concert. We don't have to support. And then some of her stuff that I like that she does and a lot of stuff, I'm like, Ugh. I'm 50 though, y'all. I'm old as shit. I'm, I'm supposed to be liking Slick Rick and Kumo D and, mm -hmm. and, and Dana Dane and, 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 and you know, Queen Latifah, that's who my, I'm, listen, that's who I came up with. These newer, younger people, they're into that and that they should not be ignored. But with all that being said, you rusty, raggedy, dusty MFs in the audience that are throwing things at artists, I don't care if it's Sexy Red or up to Anita Baker and Janet Jackson or Beyonce. You do not go to a concert where somebody is working and you throw projectiles at them where you could injure them. Never mind a pregnant woman. What the hell is wrong with you? I hope she sue everybody. I hope she sue them and get some money. We don't have to like her song. We don't have to agree with the, the movement. It ain't about that. Imagine when we go to our meet and greet in Houston and someone says, well, I don't like what Claudia said that one time, so I'm going to throw water at her. Or I don't like what Funky said about this one. Or I don't like what Al, how Al says woman. And they throw stuff at us. We, we gonna, they're going to be repercussions and problems. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> don't go to an event if you don't like them. Don't go. You don't have to go. Okay, T. Tish said, Claudia will address, will address your point after she takes a little bath or something. Oh, that was what Funky said. <laughs> sexy i'm glad you walked off you gotta protect that baby that baby could be the next president of the united states of america we never know all right singer songwriter pink panthers missed out on an opportunity to work with kendrick lamar because her date asked her to put her phone on silence what would you do if your date caused you to fumble a bag and has this ever happened to you q um, her date didn't cause her to fumble the bag. Granted, I'm not in the music business. Um, but it would seem to me if you if the person's the mo a movie is two hours long. If a person calls you to work, you know what I'm saying. You didn't answer the phone immediately. They would leave a message or send a text message, and within two hours, you turn your phone back on, see the message and and respond like i said I, I don't know the music game i don't know if it's one of those things where you home in your bed and they text you and say come out right now and, you know and if you don't come out right now then they get somebody else to do it. It, it it just seems to me like if kendrick lamar truly wanted to work with this girl she would have been given a two three four 24 hour window to respond maybe things don't work like that and i'm just ignorant to the fact 
Um, as far as the day cards are going to miss the bag in this situation, no. If you're at a movie or on your date, your phone should. See, see, that's the thing. Y'all hoes don't want to eat at Cheesecake Factory. And then you want to be in a fancy restaurant that I'm paying for. Then you want to have your phone on and want to answer your text. And I know your phone should be on Do Not Disturb if you are on a date at the Cheesecake Factory or Ruth Chris or at a movie. As far as a date causing me to miss a bag, I'm not gullible. I'm 40 years old and there is no man out there that will cause me to miss any of my money unless he's going to be replacing it. Okay, I heard that. Al, what are your thoughts on this? I, you know, I, I, I get what Q's saying. It makes so much sense when you hear it. But this young lady, remember, she's only 22. She started, you know, doing her writing. She was a writer in college and, and her career has just started to kind of lift off. And so I kind of get, I, for me, I probably would have had a meltdown. I would have probably been like, oh, I should have had my phone on. Because you think about it, listen, she did that feature with Ice Spice and it peaked at number two. So she's kind of starting to win in the game. She's getting a lot of attention on YouTube. You know, she, and so to feel that she missed an opportunity with Kendrick Lamar, another person that could like solidify her career and push it to the next level, I kind of see how she's like, damn. I miss that. So what would I do? I probably would have a meltdown. I would roll my eyes at my date or something like that. But like you said, sweetheart, you're talented, you're young, you're beautiful. You've you've moved from a from a writer to an artist. It's all coming in its time. Just hang in there and continue to do what you do. And it's all going to happen. He'll be back. I promise you. The good thing is because of this, people like us, TGIF, you know, we are the go-to show for hot topics. We're talking about it. And maybe Kendrick Lamar, I'm sure he listens to watch the show or someone will tell him about this. Give her another shot. I think that's actually admirable that she wasn't answering her phone on a date. That actually shows a little bit of character. And I think she deserves, I think Kendrick Lamar is actually a deep person. I think he's smart. I think he's classy. I think he would recognize like, okay, I see why she was busy. That's kind of dope. Cause right now people are not present when they're in each other's faces. They buy their phone, they anywhere but, the conversation in front of them. So I, yeah. I, I hope you'll get a second chance. So because right, we got a few questions. You never, sorry, you never answered the question. Has it happened to you? Missing a bag? Missing um, a bag because you were like focusing on a date or, you know, you had, you were putting a little attention on the little boo that you were booed up with. Hell no. And if that <laughs> takes me, you know how important my finances are because if you're not marrying me, I have to assume that I'm going to have to be making this on my own. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to mix finances and buy a house together or, or, or combine bank accounts, I have to always think about my bank account first. And I've actually had men that didn't want to go forward with me in relationships because you know why? You work too hard, but you're not taking care of me. I, I, I will always work hard until I get married. And we, we, you know, I have a safety net. I have to. So no, don't miss your bag for a man that's probably going to be around for three months. Let me hit two of these chat questions real quick. So uh, Sneaker on 33 says she got to get an Apple Watch. And Lady T said, I guess whatever she was offering really wasn't that special if you could just move on to somebody else because of a missed call. And Lauren Oliver said Kendrick wasn't going to do anything more for her career than Ice Spice all ready did and last but not least Seth 731 said she had at least 24 hours to call back child please which Claudia before you take us to commercial that's where my mind is at okay when she did finally get the message and call back or respond mm -hmm. what did they say to her like nah we good yeah no they were in the studio so he had a studio session and so while the studio session was going on they were trying to confirm her to join in the studio session but by the time from what i've read by the time she was able to return a message the studio session was over that's what i hate about this business because it's a little unrealistic you can't have nothing else going on because if you like realistically in real life you might be doing something and you miss out on something because you you couldn't answer your phone right away you might be with your mom you might be in a hospital you might be in an airplane all right I hope she gets i hope she gets another chance all right y'all coming up next should the man pay all the bills? And later, Lauren Hill, here we go, claps back at her fans, and you know she was late. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. She's stay being late. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. 
I'm trying to <laughs> You just boost. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. Exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. I'm living, I'm living vicariously through them. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how while you will get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. TGIF. And Lil Wayne was not pleased with the reveal of his wax figure. He tweeted, sorry, Wax Museum, but that bleep ain't me. Live and interactive. Brittany T said, that ain't Lil Weezy, that's Lil Asthma. <laughs> Hold on, call it. You, you got to see what Poppy said. Hell, the wax figure looks cleaner and better than the real Lil Wayne. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Serving up all the tea. You so messy, Q. You are. <laughs> nah. Join the chat on Fox Soul. Yeah, I don't make the comments. I just read them, honey. Oh, so, God. Welcome back to TGIF Soulmates. Go ahead and hit that like button and show your favorite trio some love. All right, y'all, listen, we are busy, 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 busy. So anytime there's a shortcut to, to get food, get sustenance, we are here to share that with you. And we are big fans. So this episode of TGIF is brought to you by Wild Grain. Now, Wild Grain is the first ever baked and frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. Every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less. No thawing required, so that's major. Now, the team at Wild Grain just sent me a new box with so much delicious stuff inside. Let me tell you about it. They have so many great products that are just so easy to make. And um, listen, I've been real busy lately. I love to cook, but it's also great to have a little bit of help. So that's where Wild Grain comes in. Al, listen, you, got- you are a big fan of wild grain yes what yes is your favorite item i know you for uh, a long time you talked about the peach pockets and then you went to another item yeah all the pockets peach pockets chocolate pockets apple pockets all of it is great the pasta is really great the bread is amazing if you like fresh out of the oven cooked sourdough bread with butter like i kind of you know my family grew up in Europe. That's our thing. We love bread and butter and jam. You you just have to try it. I just say this. If you're into bread, pasta, and into pastry, this is something that you should at least, at minimum, try once. I'm just telling you. You will not regret it. You heard it here from Al Reynolds. Funky, how is having wild grains in your freezer helpful to you when you're hosting or attending a holiday get-together with family and friends or having... A gentleman caller or your man, your man, your man. Oh. <laughs> Listen, y'all, I got to tell y'all something. I'm mad as hell because y'all know my cleaning lady came and she cleaned my house from A to Z. Why she went in my freezer and threw all my stuff out, okay? Including I had a pack of um, peach pockets left and she claimed they was freezer burnt, but they wasn't. Nevertheless, I love my wild grains. You see, I'm mad with Mrs. Zanelia for throwing my stuff out. But the beautiful thing is my family is getting ready to get together, shout Shouts out to my sister, Belinda Holcomb, who we do Christmas at her house. And I will be sending a box of wild grain products there for us to have bread and desserts for the family during this Christmas and Thanksgiving season. It is, it, it's a great, you know, and I just thought about it. That's a great way also, too. If you don't want to send it to yourself, send it to your family. I'm just sending it up there because I don't want to travel with it, but we can have it. It is a great way to break bread with family it makes a great gift and it goes very well with thanksgiving and christmas so y'all thanksgiving christmas if you really want to show out you know you're not good at making a potato salad your macaroni and cheese don't be right you might want to show up to the family functions 
with a box of wild grain. I'm just saying. Send it to your kitchen challenge friends. And you can now fully customize your wild grain box. So you can get any combination of breads, pastas, or pastries if you like. Now, if you want a box of all bread, all pasta, or all pastries, guess what, y'all? You can have it. Now, plus, for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash tea to start your subscription. You heard me. Free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash tea. That's wildgrain.com slash tea. Or you can use promo code T, that's T-E-A, at checkout. Promotional consideration furnished by Wild Grain. All right, y'all, let's get back into some more shady topics. All right, T.I. shared that no matter how much money his wife, Tiny, makes, he still doesn't want her to pay for anything. Do y'all think the husband should always pay no matter what the wife can contribute, Al? Mm, if you are super rich, if you're a billionaire, if you're a multimillionaire, if you got long coins like T.I., of course. But I will tell you this. This is why, regardless what those two got going on in their bedroom with people that they invite over to their house, this is why we like T.I. Now, we know he would not be saying if, if he made $30,000 and she was working and they had six kids. They just He just wouldn't be saying this. But the fact that he takes care of all those kids, he provides them with a great life. He provides her with a great life. And the thing that I love the most is that he is still with her. That just makes me feel like, dang, black love is still around and it's live and it's well. I'm here for it. I like it. And, and it, honestly, we, it makes us all kind of be like, well, damn, where is the T.I. in our life? In a way, right? In a sense. But as it relates to this, I like the concept in which he's saying it. Because for me, if I had the money, I always want to take care of the woman or the man in my life. All right. Q, what do you think? You know, um, I am sick and tired of all these relationship podcasts and Instagram. I'm tired of this conversation, y'all. I am sick and tired of this conversation about who pays the bills, who shouldn't pay the bills. My position has always been the cost of living is too goddamn high for two people to be trying to sit up on one person's income. I am sorry. If you are a school teacher and your husband is a police officer, you probably don't want to be taking financial advice from the likes of T.I. because what he can do for his wife and what you can do for yours and your family is two different things. I think in a perfect world, yes, the man will pay all the bills and the woman will feel like Cinderella and spend all her money and go get pedicures and buy Gucci bags and buy new cars and buy Tiffany and Pandora bracelets all day long. But the fact of the matter is, cost of living is too goddamn high for most people to be sitting up on one person's income. Do what works for you. Do not miss out on no good man around here turning the man down because he can't pay all your bills. If your husband is able to pay all the bills and you keep your money, fine. But relationships are also called partnerships. And sometimes, and for the most of y'all, I ain't on no Tyler Perry crap talking about if he could just pay the light bill, go with him. But don't feel less than a woman because you got to put in a little something on the bills. It's just the world we live in. But would you do if you had it? Would you? Oh, most, 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 most definitely. If if I had it, if I had it, and I could comfortably do it without flinching, and right. it would not alter my lifestyle in the slightest, I would do it. But if I could do it, and it would alter my life, I, I just think it's unfair for one person to be uncomfortable and the other person be comfortable. All right, See, I, I'm I not going to do it. To the detriment. I, I love that. See, I find it interesting because my parents were born in the 20s, right? Hold on, Al. Let's do this real quick. Let's go to commercial okay. and pick this up when we come back. <laughs> Keep it locked because coming up next, Lauren Hill claps back at our fans and later we're discussing the tragic story of an Alabama pastor. We'll be right back. My Wi-Fi good, though. We good. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. 
Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. TGIF. Jason Derulo is speaking out against sexual harassment claims. You see here before you deeply offended. Live and interactive. I agree with Miss Hollywood in the chat. She says he's reading a teleprompter. Listen, I know bad acting when I see it because I've done it. I'm deeply offended. <laughs> I'm going to give you Angela Bassett deeply offended. And I'm deeply offended. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come on. And I'm deeply offended. Guilty. On Fox Soul. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to the show. Now, before we went to break, we were talking about, you know, man paying on the bills when you're married. And then what do you think about this? Al, let's go to you because I didn't get to talk. Yeah, I just I just wanted to add that I'm with um, who who that PYT uh, said we were raised by a generation of women who were not allowed to work and we're still holding relationships to our parents standards and situations. So I wanted to say my mother definitely worked. But my dad was like the caregiver and I kind of like, like he paid for everything. It was like his mission as a man. It was his mission as a man and as the father of that house to make sure that his queen was taken care of. So I have a lot of that running through my DNA. So I definitely wish, and if I am ever in a position to pay for everything, I want to be that dude. Uh, I guess it's all on what you want. Like, how do you want your, your, your partner to react? Um, I live in Dallas and I am with a lot of alpha women that are extremely successful. A lot of them are more successful than their men, but they still found a way to have successful relationships because their men show their value in other ways. They may not match them financially, but they make sure the woman is straight. They take care of all the other things in the house that are not traditionally done by men and it works for them. Um, here's my thing, fellas. It's very simple. Do you want your woman to be overly, do, be very sexual with you? Do you want her to treat you like you're a king? Well, then if you can't, contribute as much as her or, or not more you have to make up for it in other ways it's okay if you don't make as much money as me because i do quite well but if you make up for it in other ways where i feel like i need you and like you you really complete me and make me feel good i'm not gonna skip a beat and if you want your woman to be cooked and clean and do all, all those other things that usually comes with her being able to have a little bit of freedom because the other things are taken care of with the finances so it all depends on which kind of relationship you want in your household. I've seen girls that are making a lot of money and their men aren't, and they're very disrespectful to them. I've seen women that their men are making less money, but then they still give a lot of respect to their man because he's still carrying his weight in other ways. Nobody, man or woman, wants to feel like they're just doing all the work and someone just gets a coast on by. They ain't enough a, po a coochie or a dangling that's good enough to just get by on just that, in my opinion. Well, maybe there's just one. There's just one guy. Okay, anyways, well, okay. Lauren Hill recently responded to all the criticism she's been getting for being late to her shows. I want to hear what you guys think about this. Take a look. Say it again, she's late. She's late to it. Yo, y'all lucky I'm making this blood rise stage every night. Okay. Um, funky, I'm gonna go to you first. 
What do you think about this? Is you this know what? So when you saw the headlines, when you just read the headlines singularly, I got an attitude. I was like, how dare she? Mm -hmm. um, I love the fact that she said, you know, she said it in a comical way. You know, what she was saying was, look up here on the stage. Look at everything I got going on. I got a whole family. Why y'all messing with me for being late? Child, y'all ought to be glad I even made it to this thing. And I can laugh with it. I do love the fact that she acknowledged the fact that she's got a history of being late. And what I hope is that the spirit of Bob Marley and Sojourner Truth, mm -hmm. really, when she sits in her quiet space, makes her, you know, realize that, Lauren, you really do need to show up to work sooner. You are the only musical artist who has over a decade long reputation of being late and it's unacceptable. I understand it happens at times. You got a family and you got kids. But Laura, it really is not that hard to be late. And being late is disrespectful. It's really not that hard, though, to be on time. That part. Al, what are your thoughts? What do you think about I, 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 I just I can't stand this crap. It, it just annoys me to no end that, like you said, she's been doing this for over 10 years. Now, we love Lauren. We know that she's talented. We know that she's one of a kind. But being late and being late for hours, sometimes not even showing up, sometimes canceling your show, um, sometimes, you know, like doing stuff like this, this is disrespectful. So I started thinking about it. Now, we're not even going to talk about Lauren Hill's mental health. Let's talk about the real conversation, which is the audiences, people who buy her con who buy her tickets, who know that she's known for this. Let's talk about their mental health, because that means that you don't value your time the way the artist should be valuing your time. And that right there brings a question in my mind. Like for 10 years, you've known that this woman is just inconsistent and not respectful of your time. Why would you continue to support her? I'm just, I just, I just don't get it. If Beyonce, one of the largest artists of all time, can be on time and travel the world and sell out everywhere and can be on time, Lauren Hill can be on time. I, I hear from my little industry insights that she's like someone that needs like all these things to be in place before she feels comfortable. Like there's a lot of anxiety, like the planet's got to be lined up and the, the, the sprout, you know, all these weird things that'll be in place. <laughs> Here's my thing. I understand that if you're a true artist, Lauren, but when you would take these big bookings and I'm talking from someone that worked on both sides as someone that has been booked to be on stage and someone that has been the person that has to pay artists, you are being very inconsiderate of everybody else's time and money. There's people in that audience that had to pay for a babysitter. There's people in that audience that have to be at work the next day. There's people in the, in the audience that can't afford two hours uh, 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 changing of a schedule without any like you know plans in place. And I think that's really messed up because you know you're not thinking about them. You're thinking about well I'll go when I go and I feel comfortable. Okay, well maybe you shouldn't accept these bookings of a hundred, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars to go if you can't be on time because. It may be not a big deal to you, but the promoter that actually books those venues, we have, we, I'm throwing myself in there. We have times where we have to get the cleaning done. We have to be out of that venue by a certain time and you push it by an hour or two. You are paying overtime for every person that's backstage. You are paying overtime for the venue and then they stop putting you into penalty. So now the concert you thought you had to spend five hundred thousand dollars on now you're at seven hundred thousand or a hundred like six hundred and you just cost everyone all this money because you couldn't bother to be on time this absolutely pisses me off so now that i've been on like like i said both sides i think it's really disrespectful and lauren they don't have to come see you there's a lot of options now they can go see sexy red there's a <laughs> lot of other people that they, they can see and i just i just want anyone even us on the panel don't ever get to thinking that you're so special Mm -hmm. That someone can't live without seeing you because they can. Mm -hmm. And I, Lauren, I want you to win. But this kind of dismissive attitude towards your fans after you have not really been relevant for a long time, as far as like, you know, new music, you'll always be relevant because you're popping. You're great. But like, I think it's really mean. They have babysitters and lives and, and, and they got to get home. I just think it's really wrong. I do. All right. Coming up, we're discussing the tragic story of an Alabama pastor. Stay tuned.
My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just bougie. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I'm, living, I'm living vicariously through them. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect Welcome back to Cheat Jeff. The soulmates stay putting turtles in our chat. Like they have their own, own little um, inside joke. So I just want to say I, hello. I, I, I'm not in on the joke. What is I'm the not turtle? Either. What is joke? It? So there's a commercial. Like okay, Fox Soul. Y'all play commercials on during our breaks, and I, the fans are saying that y'all been playing the same ones for a long time. They want they ready for some new commercials. I guess there's a commercial where someone got a dog, and the dog's name is Turtle or Turla. So they've been going in on this every single show, putting turtles in our chat. Like they like ready for some new commercials. So yeah, hopefully absolutely. we'll get some new commercials. Okay, mm -hmm. let me watch this time real quick because we only got two minutes left. Soulmates, in case you missed our big announcement early in the show, mark your calendars because next Monday, November 13th, TJF will be filming in studio in Houston, Texas. So, uh, and add to the excitement, we're planning to play an in-studio game of the hot seat. You've seen it online, but we're going to have people in studio with us. So if you're a soulmate and you are based in Texas, because we can't put you up just now, wait till we get to season four, um, please send your name, photo, and what makes you a super fan, TGIF at foxhole.tv, and we will get you in studio to play with us. And we're going to have a meet and greet also. Hold up. We have another surprise. Soulmates. Again, meet and greet will be at 3100 Fountain View Drive at Prospect Park Galleria, Monday, November 13th at 7 p.m. We are hosting our first meet and greet live in Houston, Monday, November 13th, Prospect Park Restaurant at 7 p.m. So pull up, grab a drink and a photo with your favorite host, and you can bring us gifts as well. Real quick, get into this tragic story. An Alabama pastor and mayor committed suicide after a local conservative news website posted images of him dressed in women's clothing, uh, F.L. Bubber Copeland shot himself in front of the police during a welfare check. Any thoughts on this tragic story about him getting out of the queue? Bubba looked good, bitch. Put that picture up of Bubba. Baby, Bubba was giving Delta Burke realness, honey, and I'm loving that giraffe or that leopard Bubba got on. That's, she was a big, fine woman when you back that ass up. Call me Big Bubba when you back that ass up. You know, I, I, I hate it, y'all, and we don't have time to really dig deep into this, but his death is on society's hands, all right? This is what happens when we force religious beliefs on people. We create hostile environments where people can't be themselves, and we try to box people in. 
This is what ends up happening. And shame on that conservative newspaper for outing Miss Bubba. I'm going to do this real quick. I have to disagree with Funky right here because this particular guy was doing more. He was doing explicit online activities. He was doing pornography. He was writing transgender specific fiction and erotica. He was totally being something that he 100% was not. He was dressing up, performing sexual acts on, on camera. He should have been called out because he was lying to his constituents and he was lying to the citizens that he served. But don't they all and don't we all? You know what? We ran out of time. We're going to get into this. I want to thank Al Reynolds, Funky Dineva. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Crockett's Corner. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, soulmates. Have a good night. <laughs>